in this section we'll talk about the composition of urine or the basic properties of urine composition of urine and here we are talking of all other things that is the color natural color the odor that it has and other things also and then we will come to the actual chemical composition so when we take up all these parameters say we start with the color color of urine is normally pale yellow and this pale yellow color is due to presence of a pigment called urochrome urochrome this is the pigment which is responsible for providing this yellow pale yellow color this pigment is formed by the breakdown of hemoglobin other than this there are two more pigments which are present and they are called urobilin or bilins and uroerythrin they are also there but the main pigment responsible for providing this pale yellow color or responsible for this yellow color is urochrome now color of urine may change in certain conditions this is the normal that we are talking of the color change is normally seen uh, whenever a person takes uh, drugs for example b complex so when b complex is taken beetroot then the color of the urine changes or some other drugs also so normally it is pale yellow due to urochrome there are two more pigments which are there but the color may change due to presence of certain other chemicals which come from uh, b complex beetroot or some kind of drugs the second property is about its smell or odor the smell urine has a peculiar bad smell so this bad smelling substance is urinod the smell is peculiar and it is due to this chemical or substance which is called urinod and very soon it starts smelling very strongly and that strong smell is due to urea degrading into ammonia so the strong smell is due to this process so originally the fresh urine has bad smell but that is because of urinol it is not that pungent and very soon a strong smell a strong smell appears and that is because of urea degrading into ammonia and this ammonia is responsible for the strong smell that the urine has normally this is what happens a uh, normal situation urine not that original smell because of ammonia strong smell but it has been detected that when people consume certain kind of substances then the smell of urine changes again here also we saw change in color due to certain substances here the change in smell could be due to substances like saffron asparagus and even alcohol so there is a change which is detected other than the normal uh, smell so normal color which can change due to certain chemicals normal smell or odor because of the chemical and it can also change slightly due to presence of certain chemicals the third property on which we want to understand how the urine behavior is or how does uh, the chemical composition and all those things change uh, before chemical composition let us take specific gravity its specific gravity is 1.003 to 1.04 that means it is slightly heavier than water 
slightly heavier than water. So this is again one uh, physical property of urine. Next property which we would discuss here is tonicity. That means tonicity is about the concentration. Tonicity. That is concentration. Normally, urine is hypertonic. Normally, it is hypertonic. That is, it is more concentrated as compared to the other liquids like blood. But if somebody is taking excessive water, then the urine is going to become hypotonic. But in normal situation, it is hypertonic. The next property is the volume of urine. Volume. Normal volume, that is daily urine output. Daily urine output is 1.5 to 1.8 liters. But this volume also changes. And what are the reasons for this change in volume? One such reason is intake. If fluid intake is more, then the volume of the urine output would be higher. So, increased fluid intake results in increase in the volume of urine, which is uh, excreted from the body. Second reason is physical exercise or activities. More we exercise, more we sweat. So, if there is water loss through sweating, urine would contain less water. So, more physical work or physical activity would result in lowering the volume of urine. The third main factor is consumption of antidiuretic substances. So, if somebody takes anti diuretic substances. Antidiuretic substances increase the urine output or urine volume. Antidiuretic substances, they inhibit the secretion of ADH that is antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone helps in absorption of water from the collecting duct. But if ADH production decreases, water absorption from the collecting duct would also decrease. That means more and more water will be thrown out of the body. So, how do they work? They work by lowering ADH action and that is why the urine output increases. So, because of this, volume of urine would increase when a person takes antidiuretic, sorry, di some, sorry, diuretic substances. Anti would be against. So, diuretic substances, if a person takes, then the ADH activity would be lowered because ADH is antidiuretic hormone and that would result in increasing urine output. Example, the substances which are diuretic. Tea, coffee, alcohol, these are the main diuretic substances and these diuretic substances are responsible for increase in urine output or urine volume. Diuretic substances, they work by inhibiting the action of antidiuretic hormone. ADH helps in water absorption from collecting that. So that is the thing which would get affected. So this is diuretic. And the last point on which we want to compare or rather understand the urine is chemical composition. Chemical composition. In urine about 95 to 96 percent is water. 95 to 96 percent is water. That is the main thing. 2 percent is urea which is the chief nitrogenous waste. 
So urea is the main nitrogenous waste which is found in human urine and that is why humans are called ureotelic and remaining 2 to 3 percent 2 to 3 percent are other things now what are these other things which are present the other things we will write it here the other things are potassium ions creatinine hippuric acid potassium ions which are in excess creatinine that is to be completely eliminated these are non threshold substances they are not at all absorbed they must be totally eliminated then phosphates and oxalates i'm writing this here oxalates so this others which are 2 to 3 percent only they include creatinine hippuric acid this creatinine hippuric acid which are the non-threshold substances they are completely eliminated phosphates are also eliminated and oxalates so this others basically which is 2 to 3 percent is this and this so this is what we are talking about the normal urine color pale yellow due to a pigment urochrome which is normally present due to breakdown of hemoglobin the color may change because of certain substances like drugs b complex etc there are two more pigments which are found urobilins and uroerythrins but their concentration is very less smell or odor is bad because of a substance that is urinol but very soon urine starts smelling very strongly pungently and that is due to urea degrading into ammonia so that ammonia smell is very strong and the smell of urine can also change slightly by consumption of certain substances like saffron asparagus and even alcohol specific gravity is slightly heavier than water Tonicity, normal urine is hypertonic, but as we said here, if somebody takes more water, it will become hypotonic. If somebody doesn't take that much water and sweats also, it will get even hypertonic, but normally it is hypertonic. Volume, daily urine output is in case of normal situation, 1.5 to 1.8 liters. This urine volume is affected by many things. On a daily basis fluid intake if somebody takes more of liquid on a particular day then all that extra water will be eliminated so urine volume is going to increase physical activities if on a particular day we exercise more or we sweat more then that water has been lost along with or in the form of sweat so less water will be lost along with urine so their urine volume will decrease and diuretic substances these substances they lower the activity of adh and that is why the urine volume increases chemical composition mainly water two percent urea and two to three percent other things which includes non-threshold substances like creatinine and hippuric acid excess of potassium ions then there are phosphates and oxalates also this is the normal thing now there are certain cases certain situations when certain abnormal things are also detected in the urine and those abnormal things which are present there based on that we give certain terms to those abnormalities so in the next part we will take certain abnormalities related to this that means some substances which are not normally there if they are found in urine then that abnormal situation we will take up